Are you a video creator that tends to buy a ludicrous amount of video equipment? Do your friends and family often say you have a problem? Mm -hmm. Then you just might have gas. What? That's right. Gear acquisition syndrome. Oh. And it is nothing to be ashamed about. In fact, we have just what you need to satisfy okay. your craving for new gear. A hot and spicy mm -hmm. RGB pocket light guaranteed you. to make you the creator of envy. Makes sense to me. Get yours today. Seems logical. I think I'm going to get me one of those. Salutations, my friends. My name is Travis, aka Dad, and welcome to Dad Does Tech. I'm just an ordinary dad who loves tech and camera stuff, and my goal is to help you find the right gear and get the most out of it. And today we're taking a look at the successor to one of my favorite pocket lights, and that is this little guy down here that's lighting my background, the Pixel G1S. And today we're taking a look at the successor, which is the G2. Now, for some reason, Pixel did opt to remarket or rebrand this light as the Ivisi G2 or the I-V-I-S-I-I G2. I'm not really sure why when you boot up the screen, it still says Pixel on it. It seems like it would have been better to just kind of keep it consistent. But for whatever reason, they opted to market this as the Avisi G2 versus Pixel G2. But for the sake of this, whatever you want to call it, we're just going to call it the G2 for the remainder of this video. As I said earlier, the G1S was one of my favorite pocket lights, especially RGB pocket lights I've ever had, especially in the budget friendly spectrum of under $75. I really felt like it was one of the best lights you could buy in that price range. So that means the G2 had a tall order to try and top that and become a daily driver for me when it comes to video lighting. And honestly, I think it delivers. Now this isn't a full comparison video of the G1S versus the G2, but they both do a lot of things similarly and a lot of things well. So if you would like to see a full comparison of those two lights, let me know down in the comments below if you'd like to see that video. At the time of making this video, the light is currently on sale for $69.99. You can pick this light up on Amazon or on Pixel's website, and I'll have both of those linked down below if you wanna check this product out for yourself. The contents of the box are very basic, but you'll find that all of these pieces are very well thought out and you can tell that they were really trying to create a very good user experience. To start, you'll find the light in a small tan felt carrying bag. There's also a cold shoe with a quarter inch adapter that can be used on the mounting bracket of the light itself. And then there's a small mini tripod that is very much reminiscent of the Manfrotto mini tripod that is very popular for vloggers. And it's actually pretty good. There's also a USB Type-C charging cable and a small instruction booklet. The light itself is color temperature adjustable and has a color temperature range of 2600 Kelvin all the way up to 10,000 Kelvin. So you'll have no problem no matter what you're using it for, whether it's a hair light, a fill light, or a key or accent light, whatever it is, you'll have no problem finding the right color temperature to match your scene. And it's an RGB light, so you have access to 360 different shades of beautiful RGB, which is perfect if you're trying to do backlighting or accent lighting, something cool with practicals, or just trying to get some creative mood in your shot. The control system for this light is very simple and easy to use. There are two vertical dials placed on the side of the light that you can move up and down, as well as recess down to switch modes for the light. The bottom dial can be moved up and down to navigate through the different settings, such as brightness, color temperature, and saturation, and then you'd move the top dial when you want to actually change the setting that you're on. The dials are very sensitive, allowing you to make adjustments very quickly, and each of the dials have a different function that they perform when they're pressed down. The top dial when pressed can make quick adjustments to the light's brightness from 0 to 100%. It starts at 0, then 10%, and then 25%, and then 25% increments after that. The bottom dial when pressed allows you to switch modes of the light, so you can switch from white light to RGB and to your effects panel. The light also includes nine special visual lighting effects that it can create. And while some of them may be kind of gimmicky to a lot of people, there's definitely application, depending on what it is you're shooting, where these could be extremely useful. The nine different lighting effects that are included on this light are an SOS signal, two different versions of lightning, police lights, a fire engine, ambulance, 
and two different RGB loops. And finally, the TV screen effect, which you got to see in action at the start of this video. A light like this introduces a lot of versatility, flexibility, and creativity into your filmmaking. So it's really great to have one or more of these lights at your disposal when you're making videos. For me, I have several of these lights and they all do some things well and some things better than others, which make them more useful in specific applications. But in general, when I'm looking at a pocket video light and I'm trying to decide which one I wanna buy or whether it's any good or not, there's five different things that I look for. Build quality, mounting options, size, brightness level, and battery life. Since those are my big five factors for evaluating video lights, that's the criteria that we're gonna to use to examine these today. And we're gonna start with build quality. And this light is a tank. This light is made of an aluminum alloy casing, so it's completely metal. It doesn't have any plastic on it other than this front diffusion panel on the front here. The rest of it's all metal, so it does feel like it could take more of a beating than some of those cheaper lights that are more plasticky. So that's one of the greatest things about this thing is that it does feel extremely durable, especially since stuff like this has a tendency to drop. But hands down, one of the best features of this light has to be its mounting bracket. It is so much better than most of the RGB lights out there because it's not just one hinge, it actually can flex in different directions and rotate 360 degrees, which gives you a whole lot more of creative options. One of the best things about this light being able to rotate 360 degrees is if it was lighting you as a subject and you wanted to change the settings on the light, you don't actually have to go behind the light to change them. Now you can just flip the light around and you'll be able to adjust the settings on the side and see them on the back. Unfortunately, they will be upside down, but it still works and that's better than having to get up and go behind your light every time when you just wanna change something real quick. Not only does this light give you increased flexibility to adjust the angle to get the perfect angle for your shot, it also has not one, but two different cold shoe mounts to mount different accessories, such as a microphone or an external monitor, directly to the light itself. That way you don't have to buy any extra adapters or hardware when you're trying to mount multiple accessories. While this light is a little bit on the beefier side, especially if you're comparing it to the predecessor, the G1S, it's a little bit bigger than that, but it's way bigger than something like the Aperture MC. Now, size is an important factor. So some of you may want a very small light, some of you might want a mid-range light, and some of you are fine with one being a little bit bigger. There's definitely trade-offs with both sides, but this bigger light does have some of its benefits. One of the benefits of this bigger size is that this light has more power and it is way brighter than I thought it was gonna be. And it's noticeably brighter than all of my other pocket lights, which I was extremely impressed with. The other benefit of this bigger size is the enclosure is larger for a bigger battery and you're gonna have more room for heat dissipation so that the light doesn't overheat when you're in warmer conditions or when your light's cranked all the way up to 100% for long periods of time. This light comes with a 4,300 milliamp hour battery and it performed exceptionally well in all of my testing. I put this light up to 100% after I got it all charged up and I put it on around 149, a greenish color in the RGB spectrum and I left it on and I just recorded how long it would take for it to die from 100% all the way down to zero and I got about two hours and 48 minutes before this thing went dead, which in my opinion is really great when at 100% brightness. This means at about 50% brightness, which is what most people, myself included, will probably use, you're gonna get between five and a half and six hours before this thing goes from dead. And better yet, you can use the charger to hook into a wall receptacle or a power bank to charge this thing and keep it powered while you're using it so you never run out of juice. Now we're gonna take a quick look at what some of the lighting applications for this light would be and how you could use it in your videos. One of the most common uses and applications for an RGB pocket light is that they're really useful for backlighting. So just like I'm in this video using this blue background, all I've got is this RGB pocket light sitting back here and just pointed at the background and it's allowing me to add just a little bit more color and personality to this video. But rather than lighting your whole background with this light, you can also use it in a different way, such as a practical and have it just sit behind something on a shelf and that way you can have it illuminate the shelf as a whole or illuminate objects on the shelf to make them stand out a little bit more in your background. 
Another way I like to use RGB pocket lights is to light my B-roll shots, specifically products that I'm trying to highlight in my videos. I use the RGB pocket lights to cast like a blue or some type of cool color over the object while lighting it from a different direction with a white light. And this allows some contrast and some just cool color styling in my shots. Now for white light applications with this light, there's several different ones you can use. If you find yourself shooting video for small businesses or you're shooting in confined spaces, these lights are also super useful when you don't have room to set up tripods and light stands for a lot of lighting equipment. In this circumstance, you could set things up on small rig mounting clamps or any mounting clamps really, and set it over, let's say you're shooting a kitchen scene and you wanna get what's happening over the stove and you wanna just get some different creative angles, but you don't have the lighting. What you could do is you could set up mounting clamps and then mount the lights from above and then shoot with a wide angle lens and mount your camera from above as well. And that'll give you some more creative options when you don't have the room for larger video equipment. And if you're mainly shooting talking head videos of yourself like this one right now, you can use this light as a fill light to illuminate the side of your face where your key light is casting some shadow or you can set it above your head behind you and kind of get a hair or accent light that is illuminating more of your shoulder and more of the side of your hair to kind of just make yourself pop out a little bit from your background. And while this light does have enough power to maybe make a halfway decent key light, it's such a small light source, it's either gonna be a really flat look if you're shooting from the front or it's gonna be really harsh shadows when it's coming across your face. So the only way to make it really a halfway decent key light would be to shoot through something that is gonna make it a bigger light source, like some giant reflector or some level of diffusion. So in general, it's probably better served in the fill light or accent light or backlighting department versus key light. But if you're somebody who shoots videos on the go, I think it is totally passable if you're in a pinch. There are just so many different uses for RGB pocket lights, and there's way more than what I mentioned in this video, but these are just some of the ways that I've used them pretty practically in my videos before. I'd love to hear from you guys though, if you've used lights like this before, what are some of the fun ways that you have found that you can use these lights for different creative shots? Let me know down in the comments below because I'd love learning about these kind of things and maybe I'll make a video about it in the future, who knows? Anyway, overall, I really love this G2 pocket light from Pixel, I think they nailed it. I think it's a great light at a great price, very affordable, and I think it's a great tool that provides good results for just about any creator who needs something like this in their bag. So if you're interested in checking it out, there will be links down below in the description for you to go and check that out, both on Amazon as well as the Pixel website. And that's gonna do it for this video. So if you liked it, found it helpful, or mildly entertaining, go ahead and smash that like button and click subscribe for more videos just like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.